Space Shuttle Atlantis, the last scheduled flight, live on Space Flight Now, with Miles O'Brien, David Waters, and astronaut Leroy Chow. Yes, but let's get Eve Stavros in here. Eve, thank you for dropping by. Eve is with Boeing, and um, you know this the payload in, and and they're all buds, right? Yeah, you we are. Back, I you go back worked to with Eve way back in 1993, 94. Bio rack. Bio rack. Oh, my wow. first flight on Columbia, and Eve was in charge of payload training for the Bio rack facility. Wow, international excellent. payloads and way then back then. You still get along? It's okay. It worked yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. I, have, I, have <laughs> watched, I, have I haven't seen you for a long time, but yeah, with great pleasure and interest. <laughs> Good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you too. All right, so, the, the, you know, this, this is a last today, and it's a, there's also another first and a last. It's the first time that a, a shuttle in its payload bay has carried up a Russian piece of the station, right? Very exciting. Which is cool. It's also the last time this is going to happen. Uh, so we're finally at the point where we, we've got this together, and uh, oh well, we're done. So tell us a little bit about the MLM-1, what that is and what's, uh, what it is all about. Sure. Um, actually, it's the MRM one. I'm sorry, MRM. Research yeah, MLM one. comes later, yeah. yeah. Yes. The MLM is after. <laughs> but it you is know those acronyms, Eve. Yeah. <laughs> what does EVE stand for? <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway. Oh, that's your uh, name. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so go ahead. <laughs> well, it's a mini research module, and it is actually carrying up a lot of U.S. cargo to resupply crew provisions, uh, spare parts, but it's also taking up on the outside some important parts that are going to go on to the MLM. A radiator, an airlock, uh, an arm, and a portable work platform. So it's uh, got it's pretty well packed with cargo, pretty well loaded down inside and out. Well, so we're at the stage uh, in the station where we're, we're we're darn near complete. I don't know when when is the official date when we cut the ribbon at this point. I, I mean. It's sort of an Actually, arbitrary Actually, I, I thought there was a ribbon kind of, cutting a, a little while happened, ago, and right? then they were doing the finishing We've touches now. we had the last now, basic piece, right? Yeah. So this is just outfit. I don't know if you can right? ever really be done with yeah. this, because it's such an <laughs> yeah, complex it's, and expanding it's like a and house. wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or at least the house after I got married. That's a, that's a very good point. <laughs> so you're always working on it. And yeah. so, uh, so it's very important with these, you know, three missions to go. Maybe we get another one, but three missions to go for sure <clears> to uh, use those missions to their, their fullest and to get as much stuff up there. So tell us uh, some of the stuff that is uh, a part of the MRM that, w that, that will help the station in the future. Well, certainly it will provide uh, an extra module for doing research and experiments on that will be attached into the Russian segment. It's so got some pressurized volume inside. It's got inside. some pressurized volume inside right. and they'll provide workspace <laughs> for experiments. Does um, it have room for experimental stage. racks and so forth? Uh, it, it, uh, it has racks that provide systems power, um, and it has some small capability for racks. So it's not a full-up lab, but it's a little <coughs> more space to right. do work. Right, absolutely. And, and there's some other parts that are going along with it as well. Yes, the radiator mm -hmm. and an airlock that will be attached to the MLM. Right. A portable work platform that will allow them to work outside, place to stow hardware while they're working outside the module. Um, and also a boom that gives them some extension capability for the exterior work that they do on ISS. And also in the payload, um, an antenna, important antenna, and some batteries. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, those are on the integrated cargo carrier, the vertical light deployable, which is the second flight for this particular configuration. Six batteries that are going to go up to the P6 truss element to replace some batteries that have reached the end of their useful life on station. We'll be bringing back the used batteries. A space-to-ground antenna spare, very important to have those for good communications mm -hmm. with ground. And uh, a boom for the antenna. Um, an enhanced um, orbital replacement unit temporary platform that provides a temporary stowage place, parking place, for these replacement units on orbit. And. Uh, and that's it. That's a lot and of stuff, right? Yeah, <laughs> quite well, a lot. Let me through the battery scenario for just a moment, because that's obviously very important. You know, the, the idea at this point, under the, uh, depending on how things go in Washington, is to keep the station up there at least till 2020. Of course, the, the partners would like to go longer. Um, based just on batteries alone, how long can the station go? And what happens when there isn't a shuttle to bring up batteries? Can we put them in progress or HTVs or some other vehicle? Well, I'm not the battery expert. Yeah. Um, I know their life on orbit's about nine years. Correct me if I'm wrong that's on that. Leroy probably a, knows better than I do on that sure. one, yeah. but <laughs> it does extend the life quite a bit. Uh, their batteries are fairly large, but um, I believe that they could be accommodated on some type of a small uh, HTV external 
carrier stowage for right. launch, but I, I'm not the expert on the batteries. But the, <laughs> the point is, uh, the idea now that in the sub. The, Two missions coming after this. Will there be more batteries brought up? You know, off the hand, off the top of your hand. I don't or is, believe or is so. This pretty much I the believe last this battery. is the last battery flight. Okay, so hopefully this will keep things going for a while. Now the importance yeah. of having that additional antenna there, uh, just as a spare. Um, how you know? What other things are important to have spares of up there? What are the key issues? Well, certainly a, a lot of the environmental control systems on orbit need spares. The STS-129 mission in November, that was the last mission that I worked mm -hmm. on as flow mm -hmm. manager, took up a lot of critical spare parts for stations. So we took up ammonia tank assemblies, mm -hmm. nitrogen tank assemblies, pump modules, all of that feeding in, importantly into those systems on orbit. Um, a lot of communications spares, some uh, a discharge, a battery discharge, charge and discharge mm -hmm. unit that helps extend the life of the batteries. That was taken up on STS-129. So uh, the next couple of missions will also bring up some other critical spares that feed into the station systems. By the way, that S-CAN antenna, Miles, I, I, Bill MacArthur and I installed the original S-CAN, the big KU dish on mm -hmm. STS-92. Back so in is, it hard to, is it hard to put in? No, it's not hard, but it was uh, it was interesting because you know we came down to the Cape to look at it just before it got stowed, and at that point it was a one in a, one of a kind, and they said, okay, don't break this. It's worth a hundred million dollars. Now in two thousand, wow. in wow. the year two thousand, hundred million dollars is a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty soon you're talking some real money there. Yeah, but we were up there, and Bill uh, Bill was on the um, you know he was holding the two pieces together, and I was on the arm with the power tool driving those bolts down and. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's neat to see the spare going up just in case somebody does, or it does get hit by a piece of uh, debris or something. And it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a it's composite dish. Yeah, it's a big composite it's big. dish. Yeah. So it's makes it possible for the crew members to tweet. So this is very that's important. Right. That's Among right. All the high things, gain yeah. uh, I think there's some air to ground comes, in, comes <laughs> down through that. But they, they, obviously the, the more bandwidth you have to and from the station, the better, because you've got, uh, now we're entering an era where we're really going to start utilizing it for scientific capability, and that's very important. Absolutely. We're yeah. really going to see station utilization ramp up to yep. what it really is intended to be, and that's yeah. really important for us. So the station, of course, you know, you, you know, I think about this, it's like, it would be like um, doing, you know, home improvement and you only had one chance to go to the Home Depot. You need to buy everything. <laughs> you buy everything. You know, yeah. every possible thing you can imagine would happen, light bulbs, uh, you know, toilet plungers, every, whatever. Uh, inevitably, something will break that you didn't get a spare over, of course, you know. So, how, how have they gone through systematically to decide what to bring up for spares? That's got to be a, a challenge on itself. Well, certainly. Itself. They've done a lot of assessments and studies to determine the critical spares, which systems are most critical if there were any failures on orbit. And so, the intent was to identify and launch all of those on orbit critical spares as the high priority items. They've done a really good job of manifesting just about everything they had. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's really not much left in inventory to send up there, so lots of small piece parts, but not the big ones. And by the way, you've been looking at pictures that have been uh, lacing in here. You're looking at us now, but you've uh, been looking at some pictures of the, um, the, the ICE team, as they call it. It's the crew that goes out, inspects the orbiter from, uh, from bottom to top uh, before any uh, shuttle launch. They're looking for debris. Um, you had the famous pit pin mission. Oh where, yes, that was, that was STS-92. STS-92, <laughs> the 100th flight. It was the s -camp One flights. little tiny little pin was in the wrong place. They had to scrub yeah. because they Fell couldn't get to it. Fell off and got down there and the disconnect. And so they looked for pit pins, they looked for ice buildup, any sort of debris that might cause damage to right. the uh, orbiter as it uh, flies to space. And that's what they're all about. They use their eyeballs, they use binoculars, they use infrared sensors. Yep. And uh, we're told today that there's a camera crew with them. I, it's hard for me to see uh, right here exactly what's going on, but they're actually been documenting this in uh, high definition. So oh, cool. maybe later we'll get a chance to see, um, you know, exactly what, what that's all about up close and personal. Right. Uh, after all these years, it'd be good to see that. So, um, Eve, t tell us about the station marching forward. Well, for first of all, I got to ask you: you're wearing your Atlantis ribbon. I don't know if we can get a shot. Can we get a close up of the uh, of the Atlantis ribbon? How are, how is you, you bet you're based here? Right. Yes, I am. Uh, so how are people doing? This is a tough time. It's a, it's kind of like, you know, losing a relative almost or something. I don't know. How are, th how are people doing? Well, people are really focused on this mission right. to make this mission success. Sure. Right. So they that's uppermost in their minds, really. And, and I have to say the whole team that I've been working with on payloads has been focused on getting the Russian elements here, getting the integrated carrier here, and not looking beyond that to worry about a future that right now is really still very uncertain and yeah. 
We're just looking forward to a successful launch today. So you're feeling focused, and yet there's a little Absolutely. undercurrent of sadness, I'm sure, knowing that uh, yeah. you've worked, worked on Atlantis for how many years? Uh, well, actually, I've been with this mission since October, so yeah. not that long but with I mean, this mission. Been with the program. But I've been with the program here for 13 years. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, actually every mission brings with it when you come to launch day. Yep. At the end of a mission, there is a certain sadness because it's the end of the project that you've been working on for right. however long you've right. worked it. Yeah. So there's always a little bit of that. Yeah, it's interesting because the, the, the end of your project is the beginning of the mission. It's interesting. That's you know? right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, all right, Eve Stavros with Boeing and uh, one of our sponsors who we, uh, we really appreciate uh, your support. My and, pleasure. And we appreciate your help uh, tucking things into Atlantis for what appears to be her last mission. I'm, I'm going to get weepy by the end of the day, <laughs> I think. And, uh, thanks for driving by. Thanks, and, and you should have an acronym for EVE. I, I'm, I'm going to go make one yeah, up. Yeah, do that. Right. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you.